This is the NES 101 top loader, and it can be worth two to $500 pretty easily depending on how it's modified, but unfortunately this one won't accept a game. The top loaders were way more reliable than the original NES, but there's a major downside, and that is they only have RF output. Now I've heard that they did make some, that have video and audio output jacks like this one, but I'm not totally sure if this is from the factory or if this has been modified. We'll take a look at that in a minute. First, let's see if we can even get this one working. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. Now just looking inside here, it doesn't look amazing inside, but also I'm not sure why it wouldn't be accepting a game cartridge. So I'm actually gonna just get this thing apart so we can take a closer look at that pin connector. This is gonna be my first time taking these apart. Never taken one of these apart before. In fact, I didn't even know about these until like six months ago. But I love the idea of having a much more reliable 72 pin connector. But we'll get to that in a minute. We've gotta get this thing fixed first. And it is very dirty. Got a lot of dirt down in there. Okay, and this is the connector here. Did that just, there's screws there. Does that just pop off of there? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, does that, uh, that doesn't separate, it doesn't look like. Let's get this shield off. All right, now that shield comes off. All right, and this, wow, the whole thing just comes out just like that. And then the bottom shield is also loose. Okay, there is really not much to this. Let's remove these screws so we can get this other metal piece off. And then these two, so we can get the plastic piece off. I'm not sure this plastic piece actually comes off. Yeah, and looking at it, this uh, uh, power port is kind of built into the plastic, so we'd have to desolder this to get this off. We don't need to get that off. That's all just fine. The part we need to worry about is this 72 pin right here. I think what I'll do is use some deoxid on this 72 pin get it cleaned up, and then see if we can figure out why it's not taking a game cartridge. I'm just looking down here at these pins. These actually all look pretty good. I don't see any major problems with them, right offhand anyway. There's none of them that are like bent or broken. So I think what I'm gonna do is use some very fine grit sandpaper. I don't necessarily recommend this, but I am just gonna run this along here one time. Hopefully that will just get off any gunk that might be on these pins. Okay, and now with that done, I'm gonna use a little bit of deoxid and go through and make sure there's a little bit on each of these pins. Okay, and with that done, I'm gonna push a game cartridge in and out of this. Now I don't have a lot of experience with these top loaders, but feels like that's grabbing the game really nicely. I think that's probably good for now. I feel like that's probably all that's wrong with this one, just because there's not any pins that are bent or broken or anything like that. They all look like they're in really good condition. So before we do anything else, I do want to get this board cleaned up a little bit better. We got a lot of gunk here. Yeah, look at that by the reset button there. So what I'm gonna do is brush this off a little bit and then use some BW100 on the power button and the reset button. That's just gonna clean those contacts out really nicely. I do want to brush this out a little bit better. Get all that gunk out of there. All right, now we're good there. While we have this thing apart, it would be kind of a shame to not replace all the capacitors. These capacitors, for the most part, look pretty good. This one looks like, eh, maybe there's a bulge. Maybe there's one there. It's kind of hard to tell for sure. Either way, they're not too bad. They're probably fine, but since we're already in here and doing all this work, we might as well just replace them. So I'm gonna use a large soldering iron along with some solder wick to remove the solder on the legs of these capacitors underneath the board. And then I can pull the capacitor out and install the new one. 
In this video, you've seen me using the iFixit ProTech Toolkit, and right now is one of the best times to buy one. In US stores only, iFixit is running an automatic 20% off of toolkits, and this deal is good up until May 31. Now the ProTech Toolkit is usually my go-to toolkit. It's got all the bits that I need for almost any device. It's got both of these game bits, and I've used both of them in this video right now. It has almost everything you need without a bunch of bits that you don't need. In addition, this kit is great for opening things that has adhesive or clip. We've got a suction cup, we got some pry tools over here, and then we also have tweezers and these little guys over here that are great for opening things like phones. Now iFixit is one of the best places to get precision tools, but they're also a great place to get replacement parts. They have replacement parts for PlayStation, Steam Deck, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and lots more. They even work with some manufacturers to provide OEM parts. And one of my favorite things about their parts is if you get it and it doesn't work, it's covered by a full warranty. So if you wanna get replacement parts for the devices you're working on, or if you're just looking to get a great deal on tools, go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right there. So I have my fume extractor on. I'm gonna come through and flux it up. So I'm gonna prep my iron by putting a little bit of fresh solder on the tip. And then just cleaning it off. Now what I wanna do is bring my solder wick in, just like this. Heat it up. There we go. And now the solder will flow up the braid and off of the joint. That one's looking pretty good. Now this one. And now with that solder removed, I can pull out the capacitor. Yeah, this capacitor is in pretty good condition. Then we will put the new one in right like that. I'm going to hold on the bottom of it a little bit just to make sure that it stays kind of flush against the board. Gonna add a little more flux. There we go. Flux is just there to help the solder flow nicely and also kind of clean the joint. And then I'll add some solder. There we go. And we'll get the joint hot. Add solder. I'm gonna add some more over here as well just to make sure we've got plenty there. Okay, and that is looking pretty good. Now we'll cut off the bottom of each of these leads. And that capacitor has now been replaced. Now we just have to do that four more times. Starting with this guy right down here. And three more to go. Okay, now we have the board clean. We have the 72 pin clean. We have all the capacitors replaced. Let's get this thing back together enough to test it and see if it will actually work now. Once we know it's working, then we can work on this RF output problem. Okay, and this actually is probably enough right here to be able to test it. But also, I need to test it with a game that I know works. Now, I did get a game with this system when I bought it. And of course, it's the greatest NES game of all time, Super Mario Brothers 3. So let's actually clean this up and then we'll use this game to test it. Hopefully the game isn't super messed up inside. It probably isn't. It, almost always these just need little cleaning on the connectors. So probably just do that real quick. But let's see the inside. Oh yeah. Yeah, these connectors are really, really dirty. So let's give those good cleaning. And then I think we'll finally be able to test this thing. So the method I use to clean these is deoxid and magic eraser. Before we apply the deoxid though, I'm gonna go through with a cotton bud and some isopropyl alcohol. 
this will just get off any, you know, any caked on debris or anything like that. And there is quite a bit. That's one side. This is a very dirty game cartridge. Okay, now that that's done, we can use our deoxit. And magic eraser. Now, magic eraser is slightly abrasive. And that's actually what I'm going for here. I don't want to take off any more of the coating of these pins than is absolutely necessary. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we get all of the gunk off of them so they're just nice and shiny and clean. So that's one side. And the other side. Now what I'll do, bring in my cotton swab with isopropyl alcohol, clean it all off. And then just going to add a tiny bit of deoxid on these pins again. That'll just help ensure that this connection stays good for a long time. And I'll just use a cotton swab to spread it around. But I have to make sure it doesn't lose any hairs because that will not help. A foam one would be better than this for sure. Okay. Now we're good. Now let's get this thing back together. We can finally test this NES. And back together. We've got our NES all hooked up to our TV. Let's plug it in. There we go. And power it on. That's what I'm talking about. So this NES is all working now but I want to modify it so it has better audio and video output. In order to do that, I want to add outputs right here. Now, this is another one that I bought, and I'm not sure if this is aftermarket or it's from the factory. I've heard that they did make some of these from the factory just like this. So let's open this up and check it out. Let's see if it looks like this is factory or not. Oh, it looks like it's definitely not. Somebody has done part of a job here, but not all of it. These are just soldered together. What? What in the world? And there's nothing on here. Okay, I was really hoping this was one that was from the factory that had these outputs, but it is definitely not. So it looks like they were going to modify it so it would have a power button uh, LED, which would be really cool in addition to these connectors over here. It does look like there were wires soldered to them at one point. I don't see anything going on on this board though. Uh, it looks like maybe a little solder there. Okay, so we know that this one somebody tried to modify but then looks like maybe stopped halfway through or something. So I'm going to set this one aside for now and we will go back to the one we were just working on because that's the one that I want to modify myself. So I'm going to be using this little kit by Cat House Games, and it comes with the PCB that we have to um, populate, and then we'll do the wiring into the NES. So first things first, let's get this board populated. I'm going to start with the smallest component first. Not that that's necessarily the best way to do it, but... Right, and now that our board is built, we can start working on the motherboard and getting it wired up. Okay, RF module removed. Okay, now I did have to take this power port off of the old piece that goes here. There is a port you can buy that's supposed to go in here and I should have bought that, but I didn't know I needed it. So I think this will still work though. So we're going to install that back in. All right, there we go. So this is a 3D printed piece that's going to go right here and we can connect our connections right into. But first, let's get this board wired up. So now we need to cut pin 21, which is right here. This is going to be our 
composite video source. So we're going to do that next, and then we will solder a yellow wire to that. So I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to lift the pin. I think we got it. Okay, there we go. Now we'll connect the wire. There we go. And we're gonna pick up our five volts from right here. bit of solder to that point. There we go. And then we'll solder our red wire there. There we go. Now we need to connect one pin to the CPU pin one and the other to the CPU pin two. Now this guy's going to be about right there. Okay, good so far. Now we need to connect these pads over to these guys. And now we have these wires soldered onto the correct colors. Now we need to go through here, under here, and then solder them onto the board right over here. Now we just need to hook up a ground wire, and then we're almost done. Okay, now this shield needs to go on about there. That looks good. Okay, that's going to work good. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, let's see how it looks. Not bad. Not super happy with the power connector, but we can replace that at a future date. Okay. Now, let's see if this top cover fits on. Yep. Sure does. Okay. And that looks really good in the back. I'm pretty happy with that, other than the power connector. Let's get this plugged in and see if it works now. Now, I only actually have a cable for audio and video. I don't have a separate cable for the left and right channel, but it should still work. Now we can plug this in and hopefully nothing explodes. Okay, great news so far. Super Mario 3. Okay, and TV on. Okay, input. Let's power it on and see what happens. Ah, oh, yeah. That looks amazing. But does the sound work? Let's press start and find out. Good. And it does. So that was quite the job, but we ended up with an NES top loader that has a really good 72 pin, which I think it's actually a 68 pin. Either way, a really good connector. And now we have the AV mod so it can connect right to your TV without the RF output. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix a regular Nintendo Entertainment System. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I could fix it. Thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget to go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix and I hope you have a good one.